Hello, everyone. Oh, good sound. Um, so uh, my name is Nebojš. Uh, this is Nikola. We're coming straight for, from Silicon Valley. We spent a few years over there uh, having fun, uh, enjoying the startup world over there. And this is an excellent opportunity to show everybody like how the startup culture in Silicon Valley works. Uh, pro, you know, give some advices to you guys, like if you if you ever like want to start something in IT industry, how to start, what are common mistakes, and and so on. So, this is kind of like we want to do this uh, like an active uh, talk with you guys, and we expect a lot of questions. So. Feel free to interrupt us at any point, ask any questions. Uh, we have kind of like a guideline where we want to go and what we want to tell, but if you, wanna, if you see you want to go somewhere, you have like cool questions about something, we'll just move direction of this talk to something else. Um, anyway, so the first thing is uh, my friend Nicola is over there for almost like, what, five years or four? Um, and I want him to explain you and give you some introduction of how he felt Silicon Valley uh, back then. What was that? 2010? Yeah. 2010. Uh, Silicon Valley is like really active environment. It's changing constantly. Like six months ago wasn't the same as it's, it's now. Uh, it's evolving. Like the whole thing is about technology and IT and developers are everywhere. So le let Nicole explain you and give some introduction how he experienced the Silicon Valley 2010. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, as Nebush already explained, so this is actually uh, designed to be like kind of a chat. So feel free to interrupt anytime. And uh, uh, so basically, yeah, I came I came to Silicon Valley back in 2010 uh, to work for Skype. Uh, Skype was actually in between uh, eBay and Microsoft back then, so it was back at being a startup. Uh, so my first kind of experience is like uh, when somebody always mentioned the Silicon Valley, I don't know what I expected, but like, I don't know, it, it sounds like, okay, this is the, sp uh, the place where all the, you know, technology comes from. And uh, uh, I came to Palo Alto, which is like right in the center of it. And to me, it was like, you see a little street and that's like a main downtown and that's it. <laughs> much more similar to any village we come from. So that was like a first kind of, uh, I must say like a little bit disappointed. It's like, oh, uh, I, I don't know what I expected. Maybe some flashy signs all around. But uh, basically it's, it's, uh, it's uh, like a big industrial zone. Um, for example, like just Hewlett Packard, which was on my way uh, to the office every morning. It's like in Novi Sad, all the limans together connected even maybe bigger. That's just Hewlett Packard. And uh, Google is even bigger, and uh, Microsoft is also big, but much bigger in uh, Redmond. But anyway, all these offices are like a, a bunch of buildings next to each other and uh, on a really, really wide area of space. So to me, that was kind of a first impression, was like, oh my, you know, it, it, it wasn't nothing like I expected, uh, I don't know. But uh, as he said, it's a, it's a very vibrant place. And uh, back in the days, back in 2010, um, that was like before this boom of startups that we have right now that uh, started with a, with a country recovering uh, from the crisis of 2008. Uh, there was like two times less people in the Bay Area than they are now. Uh, suddenly, like in 2011, everything exploded and people started moving in, uh, rent and everything went high twice. So s suddenly everything started exploding. There's many, many startups opening right now. Investment is kind of uh, blooming and money is all, all, all around. Maybe, maybe Nebojša can add something to that because he came like two years ago. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I, I arrived there in 2012. Um, I still think that was the, the right year. Um, so my, my impression was, uh, I, I, my goal was uh, to straight go, go straight to the startup world. Uh, so I wasn't involved in any huge companies or anything. I, I, I wanted to be like the, the stories that go around, like go to the startup, next month you are a millionaire, basically. So that was kind of like my goal. Uh, so and, and when, I, when I got there, uh, I first I realized one thing, everything is super expensive. Like to live there, to do anything there, it's super expensive. Uh, why? Just because like everybody is involved in IT world and IT world is like salaries and everything is super high as pretty much everywhere in the world. So that was kind of my first expression is like, wow, this is so expensive to be there. Uh, 
But then the next thing I noticed is like how easy it is to find a job. So I, I used to work here uh, for a little while, uh, but then when I moved over there, it was just like unbelievable. Like pretty much like you don't look for a job, job will find you if you're good enough. So that's that's the area there. Uh, and. And it still evolves, and it's now, it's, as Nicola said, it's, it's becoming more crazier and crazier. And in my personal opinion, I think there's going to be a, a huge boom really soon because money is thrown away like crazy. Like if, if you are over there and you have idea to make something and people believe in, in that, uh, you have good connections because everything, of course, over there is still about social skills and who you know and, 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 and s uh, things like that. Uh, pretty much you have a huge chance to get millions easily you know that that's that's the, the that's how it is now over there and we constantly have funny stories about like hey this startup made something which we think is completely ridiculous but these guys raised like five million dollars and it's it sounds unbelievable like from perspective when i was here like somebody raising that much money for for that stupidity so i even know like a lot of guys here who are doing more more better stuff but you know since you are here and not over there, you, you cannot access that, those kind of funding. Um, yeah, 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 it's much, way, way harder, of course. Uh, so just to continue on my ne next kind of question or just the topic is pretty much how the startup culture looks like in Silicon Valley. Uh, and it, it's, it's really cool. So when you get there, uh, the one thing I, I'm always missed in, in pretty much in Novi Sad or anywhere I went is you go out, I don't know, to the bar, or you just have friends, but you have also friends who are not in IT industry, or, you know, they're totally completely in a different world. And, you know, I don't, I, I don't consider myself as a geek or something, but, you know, you, you always want to share some ideas and some cool stuff. Uh, over there, everybody's in IT, like, literally, like, everybody. Like, you, you go to the bar and you ask a guy uh, who's not a waiter, of course, like, you know, hey, what, what's up, man? And he'll be in IT industry working for some huge company over there. There's no other companies than IT companies. Everything is like industrial comp complex and, and huge buildings, as Nicola mentioned, like everywhere. And, 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 and that's, that's the world over there. Uh, what's, what's really cool is motivation people see over there. It's everybody has ideas. Everybody wants to move and change the world. And everybody believes that they are the person who can change the world. Why? Just simply because like everybody over there, like, uh, who established? In the air. Yeah, yeah. Just, in the air. Just, just in the air. Like everybody wants to do something and change the world, and that that's something which is completely different than how the world here, uh, when I was back in 2011 here, how 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 it worked. Yeah. So we can. Yeah, maybe I can add a little bit about the culture because it seems like where we went. It sounds really negative, but it isn't. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, uh, it's it's uh, the first thing that I noticed about the culture, which was very different. I I lived in Chicago before that, and. Uh, the thing that was different is that it's much more relaxed. So, like, even CEOs go, go to work in jeans and, like, T-shirts. Like, every, every, everybody is much, much more relaxed. People are literally going in slippers to work. And uh, it's much more accessible. Like, when I was working in Skype, uh, I could easily go, you know, I, I knew everybody by name. CEO knew me by name, even if I was, like, a 600 employee. So everything is much more like uh, the, the culture itself is much more accessible. There's, um, for example, back then uh, we didn't even have the office. So everybody, everybody was sitting on one, on one floor. So y when you enter the building, you never know who, who is CEO, who is CFO, and who is just the developer there. Everybody are mixed up completely. So that was something that was really like uh, interesting to me because in uh, most most of the Mar America it's it's a little bit different. Uh, you usually have offices around windows where the managers and directors are, and then all the developers are like right in the middle uh, in in those cubicles. It's a it's a really well different environment to me. Very frustrating environment to work, uh, but. Uh, I don't know, in the valley it's kind of a little bit different. Uh, it, it's open space mostly. So uh, when he said about the bars and everything, uh, so yeah, I, I totally agree. Like uh, most of the people do work in, 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 in uh, IT companies. And now the startup culture is so big that actually most of the people are actually in the startups and trying to do something. And uh, they, I mean, there's certain bars and uh, certain like uh, coffee shops where all those people meet. And when usually the venture capitalists kind of go in, <laughs> so everybody tries to connect with everybody, thinking maybe he he's the one with the money. 
<laughs> that can invest in your ideas. So it's a, it's a very uh, vibrant place where people work all day and then like uh, work hard, kind of a play hard and during night going out and like uh, trying to mingle, meet new people and uh, trying to raise some money. As he said, uh, it's still all about the contacts and, and the people you actually know because when it comes to investment, uh, they need to invest in the team. It's not like, hey, I have a great idea and then somebody will just throw money out of you. It's more like, uh, I have a great team, you know. The idea is kind of a kind, comes second or third. Uh, and then, it, especially if the pe person who has the money trusts in your team, you have much, much better chances of actually uh, getting the early investment. So yeah, just, just, just to continue that, um, so kind of like, I, I touched that topic a little bit is, is it easy to find a job in Silicon Valley and what to expect over there? Uh, so I think this is the, the, the Silicon Valley is completely different, different in regards to everything, like how you find, look for a job anywhere else in the world. I mean, just talking about IT industry. Uh, Nico will tell his story, I can tell my story, but pretty much the story is most likely will be the same. Uh, if you, if, so the job will, so will look for you. So the, the main thing you need to have is LinkedIn. You get over there and the recruiters will find you. So just your resume will work, work for you. So pretty much uh, I never needed to look for a job or do anything. And I even now, like, it, it, I mean, it's, it's so like, sometimes it's so frustrating how many offers you get. Like Sony, like I don't know, like I think the Sony was was the one I, I got like yesterday. Somebody from Sony, like, hey, do you want to? Yeah, yeah. So Amazon, ha Yahoo, Yahoo is crazy. Yahoo is like, uh, for some reason, like they think they're down and they were down before. So they will just like, uh, we have a party. Just come to our party. We wanna look. We wanna have fun with you. And then they will offer you a job. So it's it's really really totally different. Like here, you need to be. You know, look for a job, go somewhere. I mean, who knows? Who knows how you, you find a job here? I don't know. I don't remember anymore. But anyway, over there, the job will find you, and the offers are crazy. So the salaries are going like skyrocketing. Uh, everything is going up, and not just salaries. They don't offer salaries. Nobody is even competing with salaries anymore. They are so high over there. The thing is, uh, they 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 are trying to do more than just the salary. So they'll offer you flexible working hours, uh, free op open vacation policy. So no vacation, like you can take vacation whenever you want. Uh, then gym memberships. I know family uh, gifts. I mean, just like, yeah. There are so many things. Anyway, uh, this is like perfect place to be if you if you want to work. So Nico will add a few things. Yeah, all right. Uh, so. Let me let me give you a first question and it would be how do we start? So can you give yeah. us Yeah, that, that's actually what I, what I wanted to say. Like, it's not reserved like for the people just there. The, the thing is that they are hiring really high. So uh, when I lived here, to me, that was something I always thought, you know, I have to be like the biggest genius. I don't know, we, you know, they need to hear for, about me in order to get there. It, trust me, it's not really nearly that hard. Uh, if, uh, if anybody wants to really go, go there, uh, there's a, a really good visa program. So all you have to do is actually apply to many of these big companies that, that he mentioned. So the problem is you cannot go with the startups. The startups won't make you a visa. They, it's uh, complicated, it's expensive, and they don't have the resources to do that. And even now, the, the number of visas, like uh, the number of uh, uh, people that are, are requiring visas is much bigger than the number of visas uh, per year. But like, it's a, it probably will take you a year or something, like even if they are interested in you. But it's, uh, it's very doable. Like, you can apply for any of these companies that are from here, and, and uh, I guarantee if you're good, you're gonna get your chance with interview. Just, yeah. Just, just one thing to add. So before I moved over there, I was applying for a job. So actually, like I applied for, to Skype, just for fun, to see how, how it works. Uh, and I, I tried to apply to Google, Facebook, and since when I mentioned I'm going, I wanna be there, they're like, they immediately respond. So there's a lack of developers over there. So if you're here and you are good enough, uh, you think you're, you're a good developer, just go ahead, apply if that's kinda like your, 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 your wish to be there. Yeah, and get ready for the interview. They're a little bit hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the interviewing is usually takes like, Usually, not for the startups, although because they again they don't have that much resources. But the bigger companies, even if they're hiring like crazy, the interviewing is still kind of the same. It's pretty hard, 
most of the time. So basically, you would get like two or three calls, uh, phone calls. Maybe even do something on a, like some kind of a website that that shares the screen or something like some some task. Like yeah, something like that. And then basically, you get to in-person interview. Uh, probably, if you're doing it from here, that will be probably over Skype before they send you there. Uh, so. Uh, but basically, it can last about five hours, and they're switching all the time. You're not. <laughs> so usually, you get a bathroom break like on every hour, like two or three minutes, and that's about it. And actually, what they're trying to do, they're trying to exhaust you. That's, that's like, and see how you're uh, reacting under pressure. That's like the biggest thing. And usually, they give you the challenges that are like, to me, sometimes ridiculous. But at least one of them is going to really do hardcore coding on you. That's, uh, sometimes you will get a task that's pretty much impossible to, to work in 45 minutes. But uh, that's not the point. It's point for them is to see how, the way you think, the way how you approach the hard problems. That's, that's kind of the way. But the thing is, it's a little bit different, at least, than what I'm used to having interviews here. So, but there's a lot of books online. Uh, one is like a break code called uh, Programming Interview Complete, another one is... Uh, you cracked? Cra yeah, cracked. something like that, yeah. But there's, there's like two really good books on Amazon that uh, they have a lot of tasks that you can kind of uh, practice. That's... Uh, that's uh, uh, yeah, and then for, for everybody, it's pretty much highly recommended. If you, yeah. if you have plans to apply for a job over there, uh, just first order those books and go through those books just to get a picture of how the interviews are over there. It's, it's, they're totally different than here. It's very interesting. I have, like, for, for example, a friend in Houston. He lives in Bay Area now. And he said, like, I told him, come here. It's much better. And he says, you know, I'm applying, but they're not calling. He's like, change the address on LinkedIn. Just change the address on LinkedIn. Within 24 hours, he got 20 requests from recruiters. All right, so <laughs> just but putting address there. And, uh, of course, he wasn't there, but they still paid him a, a relocation and all that. So, but, yeah, that's, a, that's about it. You need to apply. You know, don't be afraid to apply. Um, so the, the, the kind of, any questions maybe about this? No, okay. Um, so this other part of this discussion is pretty much about technology and how to do a startup and well, how, how to drive your idea somewhere and, and so on. So uh, the next question will be for, of course, for Nicola is like, what technologies are popular over there and what are not really popular from his perspective. So these guys coming from Skype, a little different perspective than mine. Uh, I'll tell my story, just like short overview on what technology is good, what's not, if you want to go over there. Whoa. All right. That's the biggest technology. <laughs> uh, so uh, basically, like, um, before we were Microsoft, when we were Microsoft, of course, all Microsoft technology were the popular ones. But before we were Microsoft, and as far as I can see, most of the companies are definitely using open source. Uh, uh, I haven't seen much of the Microsoft Windows in none of the companies I've been or worked with. Uh, most of the people, like most of developers can choose between a, a, a MacBook Pro, which is kind of a mo mostly weapon of choice. Or a, or, a, or a PC, uh, usually ThinkPad. And uh, the people who are using ThinkPad are using Ubuntu. That's like, I think, 90% of the, unless you are working something really specific for Windows, which is less and less frequent because mostly today people are uh, developing either for mobile application or, uh, or uh, websites or backend. But uh, unless you are really developing something specific for, and even then, like I was, de I was developing a plugin for wi Facebook video calling, and uh, I, I was testing it on a virtual machine. So uh, basically, the weapon of choice is usually either Ubuntu or Mac, uh, and most of the technologies they use are, is open source. So at least that's that's from my perspective. Also, startups use like a lot of Ruby on Rails as a framework. Node.js is becoming really really popular. That's a kind of, a, and of course, the, for the mobile development, that's a Android and, uh, yeah, Objective-C. Yeah, so it, in, in, in smaller startups, it's kind of the same thing. So uh, usually everybody's on Apple stuff. They use Macs. Uh, I, never, I actually never saw, like, anybody on Windows, like, in these two years. Like, uh, so Microsoft is, like, completely, I mean, over there, Microsoft is, there, like, nothing. So I never got, but it's funny, like, before I used to work with five years with C Sharp and Microsoft tools, and I was expecting recruiters will find me 
to do some C sharp, but no, that that didn't happen. It actually ended up like Java or or now recently, as he said, uh, Node.js is becoming really popular, and I would suggest like and Java is kind of dying. Uh, that's how it works over there, and I think it's going to like just go all around the world because they they kind of di dictate the trend. Uh, so Node.js, Ruby for simple stuff, Ruby on Rails. That's kind of like what when you look at like jobs over there and what they look for, pretty much. Python, Ruby, Node.js recently get like got like huge traction because huge companies switched their Java code to Node.js, and they realized it's 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 way easier to maintain, it's super fast to do, uh, and so on. But but the thing is, uh, it's really tough to find people who are actively working with Node.js because like you have JavaScript developers working on front end, which is not what you want. You want like hardcore, real good developers working on Node.js. So that's kind of like. My, my suggestion, like, if you, if you guys want to do something with that, like, pick those languages. They're really popular over there, and how it worked before is just that everything slipped through the rest of the world. Um, Something. I really think that the reason why is it like that is because the Google is kind of the boss of the Silicon Valley right now. And you can see that there is definitely a trend. If you go to Seattle area, Microsoft is that boss. And Microsoft technologies are much more popular there than they are in Silicon Valley where Apple and Google kind of rules. So maybe that that is the reason why everybody kind of dropped windows yeah so also another thing if you're a startup if you have your own idea what what would you pick like usually you would go with i don't know amazon cloud which is super super cheap i mean they even get, give you like a lot of stuff for free and uh then you probably work with ubuntu or or fedora so you end up with linux and or yeah and and pretty much you end up with that uh you don't pick Microsoft tools, so pretty much everything from Microsoft goes away. And there are so many open source tools which are really great. If you're a startup, just to make a, a really, really good, fast-paced production and make a first, first, first beta alpha version, whatever. Um, that kind of goes to my my ne next next question about that. Can I do right. Just one digression. I think it's going to be funny because uh, when Microsoft bought us, uh, CEO came and they need to film. Uh, make some uh, film like, you know, Microsoft bought us, we're going to become Microsoft, we are so happy about it. And the cameraman guy came, and the whole floor was screaming Apple. Like, all the monitors were Apple. Everybody had only MacBook Pros, and it was like, okay, cover the sign, cover the sign. Like, <laughs> whenever there's a shot, cover the sign. And the next moment, the CEO needs to hold a computer for the shot. Okay, I don't, I don't have a PC. Does anybody have a PC in the building? <laughs> It took us a while to find him a PC. So <laughs> a PC. <laughs> that was uh, to me. It was kind of a funny. Um, so uh, uh, another part is pretty much like about how to do your startup, and you know we can we we, we tried something. Uh, I even tried like two of us tried something here uh, before. Uh, if you guys are familiar with Ipix company here and uh, Madhead Games, they're kind of like two good, two companies now. They have a lot of employees and all that. So we are we were kind of like the founders of that com those companies. Um, so so there there is a thing like how se well my, my next topic is pretty much about how serious startups create their products and their life cycle in short. Uh, I w I would just tell you my my kind of like idea, and Nikola will tell side of story uh, but if you have idea to do something uh, the most important thing is like to deal to deliver something as soon as possible what that means is if you want to create something just uh, whatever is your idea first of all you need to believe in that and the next thing is uh, you just need to make something in like really short time that short time is like three months if you go over that morale goes down everything goes down and you, you lose the traction and and pretty much you'll, you'll never going to deliver anything so pick something small uh cut a lot of things out from your ideas and and just try to deliver like the i don't know i would say like the shittiest product you, you you can you can deliver pretty much but try to deliver something in three months and that will boost your morale to, to just continue and and make further development so that's that's kind of yeah, the thing is, it's like not maybe the shittiest product, but the thing is, like, take pick one feature, like that. That's kind of a, the, the the lean uh, lean startup movement that is becoming really big. Eric, oh fuck! Eric Rice actually uh, made a really good book about it, and it's uh, it's all about like taking a certain feature that you see in the whole product. So you usually have a vision, you have a product. 
take a certain feature that you think it's most important, like really, really certain feature and just develop that, like, you know, make it designed to look beautiful and all that, but just concentrate on that feature and to deliver as fast as possible. It's, it's not about technology, it's not about what is behind, you're probably gonna rewrite it like 10 times after that, that's really not important. Like, it's more important this is a business, not a technology. So make something really fast, you know, type a prototype in whatever, whatever you find easiest. And then after that, like as he said, launch on a really small user base, just those early adopters, because if you go big immediately, like you put some, like you pay like, a, I don't know, $20 to a bunch of people on Facebook to be on the ad and you get like 5,000 users and they get completely disappointed and they won't be coming back. So it's more like put it on 100 users, you know, see, it's gonna be probably shitty, it's not gonna have all the features, the people are gonna complain, but at least you will know who is your customers and what they are complaining about. You will learn some things very earlier so that you can actually work on that and, 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 and actually go with that and see, maybe sometimes it's gonna be a little bit different direction than you initially thought, but that's kind of the way it goes. And uh, after you have that certain uh, uh, MVP is, is like a minimum viable product, out and you have a certain traction, then it's maybe the time to actually go and search for the investment, at least there. Um, so just uh, on the top of that. Also yeah. charge as early as possible. Yeah, charge as early as possible just to get some money. It's way easier if you want to work with investors. Um, so the next thing is like how, how it is working for a startup. Like you, you guys probably heard a lot of stories, at least I, I, I heard a lot of stories before I moved over there. It's like people working like 80 hours a week, uh, I'm not sleeping at all and, and stuff like that. So uh, it's pretty much, I never experienced anything like that. So I'm like two years in startup world. Founders, I know. Usually. Founders usually do that. Uh, if, if you're somewhere around that, uh, not, not even founders spend that much money, that, that, that much time, uh, to, to be around the, the product, but they are doing the other stuff as well. They're not coding, they're usually like just spending most of the time looking for investors and doing some other stuff. Um, anyway, from the perspective of developer over there, uh, it's pretty much like the normal, so, but the most important thing with the startup is just prioritizing. Like you just need to pick your features as Nicola said and just 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 implement them and that, that's, that's pretty much all. Um, so the, the next thing is, uh, how, how, how to do a startup. So over there, it's a little different. Uh, we'll try to give you some, some clues later, like what you can do from our experience with the, gaming, the game development industry here and how painful it was to start it here. Uh, but over there, there are a few buzzwords going around. I'm not sure, like, do you guys read uh, TechCrunch? Probably, yes. Uh, anyway, like you see a lot of startups, what's happening over there, and there's so many buzzwords, like seed money, series A, series B, you know, people going IPO and stuff like that. And how actually, like, if you if you make a startup and your idea is successful, I mean, you can start, you can make a startup anywhere in the world and then you later, you move there because that's how usually it is. Uh, and then you start looking for money and so on. So how, how usually people become suddenly like they're millionaires and so on. Uh, so pretty much the whole thing is you have, you, you started something, you made this minimum viable product and you get some traction, investors wanna look, they, they, they either find you or you find them, it doesn't matter. Uh, there are actually like, just a side story, there are actually cool parties over there where like you meet a lot of investors, a lot of cool people, we recently went to one and you know, you just, you just meet awesome people over there. I think like the party was like 30 billion dollars worth of people around that. So uh, it, it's really awesome and uh, usually you look you look for small amounts of money. Uh, so if you if you if you guys ever wanted to start something and you think like oh I need a million dollars or something it's it's not going to happen. Uh, they start with small small amounts of money and usually you go around and beg pretty much for money from like 20 30, 30 different sources. Some somebody will give you like 10 10k 10 grand uh, 20 depends and you you collect some money to be successful and you can continue working for three months or something and and that's pretty much your seed money, or sometimes they call it pre-seed money. Uh, so if you read about that, that's, that's actually that. Uh, usually your family, friends, or really close angel investors, like small guys, it's not having a lot of money, they'll, they'll do that. Um, hmm? Yeah, or, or incubators, like they're really popular over there. So they'll give you that, but on the top of that, these guys will, will basically be a bridge to the bigger guys because they have the connections and then they have everything. So they'll, they'll introduce you to more, uh, 
the, so to VCs or more bigger investor companies where you can raise more money. So after three months, pretty much you, you, you are continuing your work. Uh, you have something, you, there is also like expectations after three months you continue, and then you start raising another round of money just to continue to, to produce. Uh, and that's called Series A. And usually you would raise like a million dollars or $10 million, like that's kind of a range. Uh, and that's your Series A. It involves serious people. Uh, like legally, it's way complicated than, than the, this 10, 10 grand uh, thing. And then after that, it's expected from you to have a product which people use, uh, you can charge, you have the whole story completed, and then they'll see how successful you are. So if, you, if you're becoming more successful and you get more traction, uh, that's kind of like what happened with Airbnb. They became, like they had this, I mean, really crazy like startup story. Like they went through the seed round, was crazy. They even sell like uh, cereals with, with Airbnb over there. Uh, just, yeah, yeah, just, just took, took them the year to get that initial money and then they continued but then once they they got the traction it's super easy like you know the the money will just come in uh, and that's come usually called what are the usual conditions that the venture capitalists are asking for you that that's a that's a that's a cool question. So because we 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 are trying to do that now, and we are going for for investors, and pretty much uh, they look for for a few things. One is you need to prove prove that you have attraction. So that doesn't mean like hey, I have five hundred thousand users. That doesn't work. They need to see that like yeah, you have five hundred thousand users now, but month ago you had only hundred. That's a huge traction. So every everybody will go after you if you had something like that. So everything is about like, is your traction going up in whatever your product is, whatever it can be your traction. So pretty much that's the first thing. The other thing is your team. And I think Nicola can add something about that because he was doing a lot of about. Yeah, I, I can add first when it comes to the money, the reason is like, why would you go and ask people for the money? Let's start with that. Usually because software business, as you all know, it's a business that takes time to develop before you actually get some reasonable amount of money that you can pay people to work for for you and all that. And in today, like what used to be like a 10 years right now, it's about two to three years. Like the software needs to go from zero to success in three years. Otherwise, it's bye bye. The, the, the world changes. Like if you if you started working like uh, three or four years ago, just a website. Today, you know, it, the mobile goes first. It's it's completely different. So you either had to become something and kind of a go with it with the flow, or or that's what the investors usually expect. And you usually need the money to pay out all that uh, to pay developers, which are as he mentioned, very expensive in the Silicon Valley. So uh, the another reason is that. Once you get that seed money, you will get the angels and people who are very, very p powerful places. Um, and uh, the thing is, like everybody protects their own investment, so you will have a contact where you need them, and you you, you have a much more bigger opportunity to actually grow. Uh, if you have millions, you will need, uh, in a certain point, uh, a big advertisement. You want to spread. So the st all, the, all about the startups is becoming global. So it's not a small business like you want to start, I don't know, like bookkeeping agency or something. You, the startups is something that, that is very uncertain and needs to become global. It needs to be big. Or, you know, to make a big payout in any way, either like an a IPO or a big sellout which is even better for investors. They like a big sellouts, you know, they don't have to wait for the IPO and all that stuff. And it's like, you know, in three years, their investments comes back and that's about it. So uh, one, one thing uh, when you ask what, what the investors are looking for, they're also looking for, uh, so the, the traction, the people you have, you need to prove that you have successful people who can deliver. Uh, the one other thing they look for is, as he mentioned, like your your idea needs to be global. So if you apply and, and you are becoming successful and your idea becomes global, they expect like returns of like 30 times or 40 times. So if they don't see that their investment will be like 30 or 40 times returned, they don't go for you. So that's that's why you need to prove that your idea can be global. So that's that's that's. That's that part. Um, so the, the the next thing is like where do, where do you get uh, the most news on startups? That's a question for you. For me. Oh. <laughs> 
Well, usually, as he said, the TechCrunch is a really uh, great thing, but uh, mostly all the startups and VCs are kind of using Twitter. So you need to follow the right people on the Twitter, and uh, like kind of a, that's kind of the place to be when it comes to startups. Uh, personally, I don't know why, but somehow they picked the Twitter. <laughs> not the Facebook, not the Google+, Plus, but the Twitter is kind of the way to be. Um, also, uh, another thing is like whenever you ask the VCs, uh, and this is very important, like, okay, so we, we have something, and, and what advice can you give us? So, to mention, we are asking VCs, not the, the angels. So we are asking really the big guys, which uh, we are not actually asking money from them yet. But the thing is like, okay, where, where do you live? Here. Okay, that's the first thing. <laughs> so basically, they do... It's not as it used to be. It used to be you have to be on Stanford. You're like, you need to be in Stanford somehow. Otherwise, you, you don't have much chance to meet them. But right now, it's still Silicon Valley. In, in uh, Europe, London is kind of the big hit, and it's becoming a lot of money, money is going there. But in Silicon Valley, you still get like the best... Uh, uh, I don't know, best, best terms when it comes to money. So they usually give you the more money for less uh, percentage of your company and then so, and so on and so on. And kind of a, there's much more money moving on over there. And the uh, prime reason is not because they're in love with Silicon Valley. It's because VCs like to be 20 minutes uh, uh, from their investment. So in any moment, whenever it ne it's needed, they need to be 20 minutes uh, from their investment. That's, that's like the prime reason why they're, and they are living there, and the reason why they're living there because, uh, well, we have 300 sunny days a year. So right now I'm already depressive because of three days of rain. Like, <laughs> I'm so used to over there. So uh, it's really beautiful place to be. So yeah, for the for the news, uh, I think the TechCrunch.com tech is like the best place to look for and search for if you have any competitors and all that. And if you launch even from here, uh, just go and there is like a button provide a tip or something like that where you can like make you know try to at least to spread out the word about your product Kickstarter and is Kickstarter is the awesome thing it doesn't work from Serbia so it no it doesn't work so you need to be either I think in like only UK and, and USA are are, are possible now so I'm, I'm not sure um, Anyway, so Twitter is the next, second next big thing, and I, I never got actually like the, the I never got the catch of Twitter. What's Twitter about? Uh, I never I had my account created like in 2009 or something, or I, but then not, recently I started like following these like guys who are either investors or in Star World, and you can learn a lot of th stuff about what's happening over there. So posting. they're posting constantly, like like literally like pretty much every 15 minutes something what's what's happening over, over there so it's a cool way to to follow for any competitors or whatever for any ideas um so just like before before i jump to this next one is i just want to ask you guys like if just raise hands if you guys are experienced with agile technologies uh, agile met methodology and scrum like just just like to see if, if we should continue with that one um so one one thing uh, this this is this will be kind of short. Uh, m my impression on that and Nicole's expression impression of that from Skype. Uh, nobody does that well. That's at least my impression from startup. Like nobody does that according to the book. Uh, before I used to work for a company called Apex SQL from North Carolina, and I actually tried to implement the Scrum over there properly. Uh, it went fine for for a while, and then kind of like well, I left the company, but probably that's not the reason why it slipped away. But it, it has tendency to slip away. Um, so every startup over there kind of tries, and they are so proud of like oh yeah, we are doing agile, star scrum or something. Uh, they're using Jira or whatever to have all these like fancy tools, and it never works. Literally, never works in a in a real thing. So usually everything breaks up if there is a crunch time or if there is something. Everything breaks up. So that that's pretty much my experience. Like in short, from from from. Like what's how the production works over there, but everybody's on Scrum. That's that's the fact. Yeah, the thing is, like yeah, as he said, at least it doesn't work as it is by the book. The one of the reasons is usually that Scrum requires too many resources, and uh, that that's kind of a, you have it for every three or four people, like three to five people need to have a dedicated like a Scrum master and stuff like that. And it's usually not nobody has that resource. It's not even Google. So uh, that's one of the things. And the other things is usually that the bigger companies try to apply it uh, 
they had something and then they tried to force something else, like usually Scrum, and then it works in certain teams very well, but not in the whole company. So I saw the teams where it did work very well, but usually like global. And then the startups have a different kind of a problem. The startups go small and then sometimes they usually spread. So like you, you begin a year with four people, you end the year with like 30 or 40, and uh, nobody has time to educate them properly. Uh, it's it's a very busy. The way the startup usually works is you 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 keep firing yourself. So you you do all the work, and then when you can't do it anymore, you fire yourself by hiring somebody to do all that a certain part of your job, and that's how it usually goes. So pretty much, it's a very very busy. <laughs> uh, if if you are successful, yeah. So uh, I actually work for a company like that, where everything is like uh, horizontal. So there's no like boss or upper door managers or anything. So everything, everybody is involved in everything. Oh. Yeah. It is. No, I, I would say not everywhere. So, um, yeah. So I I work for a com for a startup now, like which exactly has the plain structure, uh, no boss or anything. Uh, has benefits, has like some wrong, some bad things about that. Uh, so the good thing about that is you know what's happening in the company, and I guess that works for a startup. Like if you have hundred employees, they will break apart. That that's impossible. Yeah, like you need to have some kind of organization, like vertical. That definitely you need to implement that. Uh, but smaller startups, like how they start, that's that's awesome thing. So everybody is involved in every decision, like design talks, uh, investor talks. So I know everything about investments. So I know when is the next investment coming. Like I, I know everything. Like I know uh, that's that's the that's the point. That's a good part. The bad part is like uh, when the startup grows, you, everybody becomes like overwhelmed with such so many information which is completely useless for most of the, your regular working day and and sometimes that can be a problem and affect productivity so yeah some startups are doing exactly that uh, they they think that's cool uh, personally I think that's cool if you like two of us are, are, are making a startup and maybe there is like two three guys around us that makes sense because everybody actually has the the options in the startup so everybody has a little piece of that company and that will really make sense otherwise not really uh, yeah. yeah, that's Microsoft, yeah, I know that. <laughs> But basically, the Scrum should scrum, also be, be be that kind of way because, like, okay, the CEO and the higher like hierarchy is more like um, uh, having a vision and seeing that the company goes with that vision. So that's practically their job, not to kind of a boss around, but more like to put the vision, put the direction of the company. Um, basically, uh, having a smaller group which is pretty much the, what the Scrum is, like having a smaller group of people, like for example developers, and maybe having a certain lead. You always need one lead, not because like that lead needs to boss around. It's more like to do tasks that are really boring. Like, so the developer can focus on, its, on, on the problem itself and not have to deal with politics. Uh, and then you have like, uh, like uh, somebody who, who is actually doing the product. Uh, 
and uh, basically, I saw many companies work that way, but you still need some kind of a hierarchy. Yeah, you need, you need a connection like between those people who have the vision and then these people who are actually doing the, 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 the real product execution of, of that vision. So there's need to be some kind of a connection. I don't see it in many companies and even most of all that I worked, I don't see it like, like a real boss. Like, you know, when we used to have in this, I don't know, during like uh, communism and in and after in this uh, com companies around here, state companies, where you always get this manager and then everybody is afraid of manager. I, and I don't see it that way over there, especially not now when anybody can find a job tomorrow. So it's not really like that, uh, that uh, anybody's care for their job, unless you are, you know, fucking something up. But uh, if you're doing your job correctly, I think uh, that, that the, actually the manager's role is to manage your career to see that, you're, what, that uh, how for you, uh, if you are going up, then the manager is doing his job. That's, that's kind of the role, and to kind of protect you from uh, uh, all the politics there is. Also, another interesting thing about the politics, uh, tell people about Trump, is basically uh, you should adapt and change the way you think about politics. And that's what they are doing, but nobody is, if you, if you ever like go and talk to like Jim Cooplin and guys like you know, talking about Scrum Collective, they would always say there is no like Scrum. Yeah, there is no like. Scrum or it's not. Yeah. So that's what he and I, like nobody is no, really implementing yeah. Scrum in that way. People are mostly doing exactly what you said. Yeah. Like I think even, even some companies like, uh, they go with Kanban approach, which is a little more, a little more effective, maybe. Uh, depends, but uh, the, uh, what was always a problem is like always there is like some time when somebody say says, okay, let's let's do it a little different way. It's like a super exceptional case, and then everything falls apart. That's that's pretty much what happens. It shouldn't uh, be interrupted during this course. It, that's in theory. So, but ne I actually never experienced that, even though we're there. So, uh, the the one thing there is like I wanted to say something like. Uh, be I had a discussion before is uh, about productivity. So uh, Scrum is there just like, just to make you more productive in a way. Uh, but just an overview is like, yeah, the Scrum maybe doesn't work perfectly over there, maybe it doesn't work perfectly anywhere else uh, in the world, it doesn't really matter. But if you compare like companies here and companies over there, even if like they, uh, however they work, uh, with startups or whatever, um, the productivity is way, way better over there. So that's kind of like what, what was my impression. I used, but I used to work for Levy 9 here before. Uh, and when I comp compared the, so Levy 9 for me has like the really awesome management organization and everything. So it was like really, really cool thing. Uh, and I think that's, that's, a, that's a cool part of Levy 9. Uh, but when you think about productivity, it's, it's, it's way, way different. It's like how, how, they, how they produce software over there. Um, I think there, the difference is that over there, like they're much more flexible, and they're not doing the outsourcing. That's one of the things. Like it, you're directly on the source whenever the idea has come from. So you're working on the main idea. And the whole point of the Scrum is actually to be flexible, as we said earlier, like about the lean. You kind of have your customers leading you the way, and things change, you know. And it used to be like you have a certain specification. This is how things needs to look like. And for the next year, you are developing by that specification, like really following it blindly. And the, the, the world wor works differently today. Like one year is a long period of time. And you need to, that's the point of Scrum. You need to release constantly and then see what, if, if what you are doing is good or bad. And then like kind of steer that direction and be flexible. That's, that's I think that's, Scrum does it really good. And I think in Silicon Valley, everybody is kind of a following that model, like really releasing yeah, often. Like, well. yeah, they're doing that very well. And today it's easy to release. There's no more like application that you need to download and then click set up EXE. Like everything is like just deployed very, very fast. So, yeah. Um, so I think I, I saw like somebody else had uh, some other questions. Uh, yeah. Because there's always something special. Yeah, yeah, exception. You already said it, so that's why I 
yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so the, the next thing is, uh, so Nicola, for you, what, what's, uh, what do you think is the biggest benefit of being in Silicon Valley versus anywhere else in the world? The weather. <laughs> no, I, I, okay, I, I think, yeah, snowboarding, like it, uh, it's a winter and it's like 24 degrees outside and you're driving your convertible back from work and then you, then you just go to mountain within three hours and then you have a 14 really nice ski resorts on Lake Tahoe and you do skiing and then you come back and in Monday you go to work and it's 24 degrees. So you have like a Disneyland version of the snow. Uh, it's, it's like, you know, you don't have to clean your car or in front of your house or anything like that. You just go, you do it. But uh, I'm, yeah, I usually make this joke, which is actually a reality, but uh, yeah, it's true. But uh, basically it's, uh, it's uh, as I said, very vibrant place. And unlike Chicago, where I used to live, uh, here there's people from all over the world. Like in Chicago, most of the foreigners, like most of the uh, immigrants I ever met there were like from Poland, Greek, Greece, Serbia. Uh, here, there's people literally from even Western Europe, you know, from uh, India, from all around the world. Uh, uh, really great minds in, in IT are coming there, and everybody's there. So, like, you know, y you can feel that in the air, like wherever you go. It's it's just like that, and all the all the all those. Um, I mean, all the great products. Uh, like when I go to work, I see at least 20 Teslas on, on my way there. Uh, maybe because Tesla is next to Sky, but <laughs> but uh, like uh, you know, everything that happens happens there. And uh, like uh, you have the ocean on one side. If you live on peninsula, there's the ocean on one side. There's the bay on the another. It's it's really beautiful. A lot of stuff to do uh, if you like outdoors. You're like 10 minutes within 10 minutes out of the city. So uh, I, I, I just love that place. That's kind of the first time I said, okay, this is where I really want to you know, grow old. Like, this is the place to be. Uh, yeah, so um, I used to travel a lot before. Uh, went to Asia, went to like pretty much everywhere in Europe. Um, and whenever I came back to Navi Sad, I said, this is like one of the best cities I ever went to. Uh, and, and this is actually the first time I'm coming back after so long. And I, I now, kind of have the, the, the feel that like the exception is the Silicon Valley. It's just like how it looks and the and then the weather and everything as he said is just unbelievable. Like you know everything is around you, like whatever you wish that's around you. Uh, that's just like as, as a human being if you're there. But uh, from perspective of developer uh, and enter entrepreneur as well is like if if you're over there you have one huge thing and that's access to huge investments so for example let's say you here have idea to make uh, another let's say Airbnb doesn't exist and you want to make Airbnb here and I'm over there have the same idea so the chances I'm going to be more successful over there are just unbelievable like you know you can make everything you can make the whole product before even I, I, I had like the prototype and I can still crush you because I'm over there. The, my, my my access to investments are just um, just just that. That's the fact. Uh, that's that's for me like the huge huge opportunity of being there from the perspective of inter uh, being entrepreneur. I would just like to make one more addition. When you get stuck, you can go and ask one of the best people in the industry for advice. That's yeah, like yeah. Oh, that's another kind of a resource that's really good to have. So uh, yeah, that's that's one thing. Like we have, like if you go to meetup.com, uh, I'm not sure if that's popular here in Serbia, but uh, if you go to meetup.com, there is like every day, like this this kind of like meetups, like he, this one. We I think this is huge for 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 Novi Sad in Serbia in general, having something like this here. But over there, that's like every day. And, and not one, like millions. Like you just pick a technology or, or area you want, and like yeah, that's that's over there. That's somewhere in in, in on, on peninsula, and and you can go there. You know, free drinks, free food, of course. Uh, meet amazing people. We actually went to like one huge TechCrunch party, and we spent a lot of time with like a guy from from vice president of Amazon. Awesome guy. Just like you meet awesome people. That's that's the thing. Um, so. Um, that's uh, that's that's the huge thing. So uh, just to like wrap up kind of this story, uh, it's uh, is there any advice how to make a successful startup in, in here in Serbia? Uh, just from perspective of working with IPix and working in game industry and uh, having a game development uh, course, uh, pretty much it's really really tough. Like if you have any ideas and you want to make something, uh, you're going to like spend uh, you you're definitely going to spend a lot of time just going through the the business stuff, just like finding your ways how to get money well, and so on. 
Yeah, especially if you want to go global, and that 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 that's really tough. The the, the problem is like the access to get good people here. Uh, that that's really tough. You need to have money and all that, and that's tough to find. So. Um, so, but but one ad advice is like you need to be persistent. Uh, just continue. I was like, we, we actually spent four years working in you know trying to make a game. Uh, I quit doing that. I was so tired of that. Uh, uh, the guys who started with me, they continued, and now like if you guys know about Ipix yeah, here, they're they're, they're like 700 people. yeah they have like all together 700 people or something. So, but they, it took them six years. Facebook like in six years is now like super powerful force so um, but any questions about anything about Silicon Valley or uh, pretty much like our our goal here is like after this if you want to just have a chat with us to make a connection if you're guys developers designers whatever and you think like we can make some connection with uh, with the Silicon Valley uh, and you're here uh, we can help you out some somehow so just we find us around here um, any questions Uh, I think just that that's just a talk, and I, the whole immigration thing is it, that that's affects to, a totally different set of si people. They're actually, yeah, they're trying actually to put uh, to have more people that are like uh, they actually wanted to put more visas open, like for 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 the companies to get in, and then kind of a. Uh, Stop the green card lottery and other 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 kind of ways that people usually go and but that's actually good because people are needed over there and uh, there's as I said uh, we said earlier now I don't know how long it's gonna last you know in 2001 there was this big crash when suddenly everybody got fired in 1999 it was the boom and it was it was even worse when I say okay now it's the boom look all the hiring they tell me oh, this is nothing you should have seen 1999 that was like just crazy. Uh, but uh, because right now they're still, as I said, keeping the kind of the level of, of requirements for you to, to, to get a job, especially in the big companies. Back then it wasn't, it was just the bar was lowered. Uh, but, uh, you know, it can, it can crash next year. Uh, the one thing I learned is that the difference between the Serbia and um, I came there 2008, which was the worst year for everybody. And I was in, in Chicago, and the, way, the day I landed, 13 people were fired from my company. And I felt really bad, like, you know, I'm, this, he's this Serbian guy they're bringing, and they fired the 13 people. So how are they going to react? I know in Serbia, everybody would be pissed on me, but I kind of had a warm welcome. <laughs> I mean, they hated the guy who fired these guys. I mean, they hated his ass off. But, you know, they know it's not my decision to hire me. So kind of, uh, I, 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 I got a warm welcome much better than I actually expected. And then I saw some more people getting fired. And this is the big difference I learned that between the Serbian there is like, you see a guy that's like 50 years old and gets fired. And suddenly like, you know, he's going strong. He, he's learning new technologies. He's just going, going for a job. He's not criticizing Obama or like thinking about, you know, because that, that's not going to help. You know, he's trying to get a job and eventually does. Uh, that's a completely different level of mentality than people have here usually. And, uh, and I saw within one year, like when, when things did get better, like, I don't know, something like here when things go down, they go down for years. And uh, over there, like, with, oops, within two years, like things just started going uh, uh, like exponentially up. Yeah, probably. Yeah, it can be. Um, yeah, I think we're kind of like running out of time uh, for this. So just like if you have any questions, we speak Serbian, of course. <laughs> just like find us around. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you for your time.